welcome to another episode of Infoscope. I'm your host, Hannah Kim. Let's first start off with what's trending in the IT and science world. Last month, the Korea VR Festival 2016 gathered representatives from 79 different companies. And at the festival, the government shared that Korea would leap into the virtual reality market, a field that Google, Facebook, and other global tech companies have been very interested in. We'll have more on this in just a moment. And elsewhere in the world, an event called the Cybathlon recently took place in Switzerland. This international competition has also been called the world's first bionic Olympics. Why is that? Here's some more details on this event coming up next on Briefing Scope. Some 300 participants equipped with bionic assistive technology from 25 nations took part in the Cybathlon, a competition for disabled people. Team Korea ranked third overall, scoring 307 points in three courses of the powered exoskeleton event, coming in after Germany and the United States. The Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning announced during the Korea VR Festival 2016 held last month that it would boost its investment in virtual reality technology to 350 million US dollars over the next five years to establish Korea as a leading player in VR. All right, now shifting from the Korea VR Festival, if you have a cat or a dog at home, I'm sure you'll be able to relate to our next story. When we look at household pets, do you ever wonder if they understand the human language or symbols? If you think about it, they are trained with verbal commands and actions, so they may understand more than we think. But how can this be applied to other animals? We'll have the answer for you in just a bit. Now, when we think of autumn events in Korea, one of the biggest events in the fall is the annual Seoul International Fireworks Festival in Yeoido. I'm sure you can imagine how beautiful fireworks could be along the river, but have you ever wondered about the physics behind the fireworks? Well, this next video might help you understand it better. Here's Industry Inside. Fireworks light up the night sky with blazing flowers, hearts, all kinds of colors and patterns. But what makes this variety of shapes and colors possible? Within the shell, there is a lifting charge that launches the firework along with gunpowder that blows up the firework in small stars that create different shapes. The shape of the firework depends on how the stars are arranged. If the paper wrapping around the stars is on the thicker side, the firework will be round. And if it's thin, the firework will fall like a cascade. Different colors are made with different elements mixed in the gunpowder. Copper will create blue-green fireworks, calcium orange, sodium yellow, and strontium red. Moreover, fireworks can be launched in sync with music, thanks to the computer. The biggest fireworks seen last month during the 2016 Seoul International Fireworks Festival was shot 270 meters up and had a radius of 250 meters. For fireworks of this size, it is a good idea to be at least 300 meters away from the launch base. This monkey is tapping the screen based on word recognition. When the screen shows a familiar word, the monkey taps on a circle, and when the word is unfamiliar, the monkey taps on a cross. This experiment was conducted in France in 2012, and it shook the research community by showing that monkeys can recognize words as well. However, recent research has shown that other animals have similar capabilities as well. Researchers from New Zealand and Germany taught different words to pigeons and trained them to tap on the screen when a familiar word appeared. The pigeons maintained a 70% rate of accuracy, recognizing some 50 words. Along a similar vein, some animals have been shown to be able to recognize symbols. Researchers in Norway trained horses to touch specific signs with their muzzles if they wanted to be covered with a blanket or take it off. Within 11 days of training, the horses were able to communicate whether they wanted to be covered with a blanket or not, based on the weather. 
And I think that we humans can improve our skills to interpret the animal's uh, body language. And uh, this may increase our attention to animal needs and enhance our respect for them. The capability of animals to visually recognize words or symbols has been proven. But what's unknown is whether they actually understand the underlying meaning or significance of a word or symbol. Even so, such research has confirmed that humans will be able to communicate better with animals. Moving on to the next part of our show, did you know that cone snails use insulin to paralyze its prey before consuming it? Well, new research shows that this procedure can also be applied to humans, possibly developing new treatment options for diabetes. And staying on the topic of medicine, the human brain has a blood barrier that protects the brain. With that said, medications targeting the brain can be ineffective because it cannot fully cross that barrier. However, there is now a new method that uses ultrasound to open the barrier, allowing just the medication to pass through. Let's take a closer look at this in our next segment, Tech a Peek. Medicine is administered following brain surgery. However, 99% of all medicine administered orally or intravenously does not reach the brain due to the blood-brain barrier. This barrier is formed by brain cells that create very strong bonds and keep foreign particles from entering the brain. Researchers have looked into ways to open this barrier, and Korean researchers did just that with ultrasound. Firing ultrasound to a specific part of the brain will allow the barrier to open, and let medication in. Also, there are proteins in the barrier that push out foreign particles. Ultrasound was found to suppress the functions of these proteins. Firing ultrasound to the brain of a mouse revealed a drop of 70% of those proteins. Coupled with ultrasound, medication will be able to remain in the brain without any rejection. Researchers believe that this technology can be used on proteins linked to disorders like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease and open the way to other treatments for brain disorders. This cone snail extends a tentacle toward a fish and instantaneously paralyzes it. The cone snail injects the fish with insulin, causing insulin shock. Its insulin acts fast, dropping blood sugar levels in two to three seconds. So we've been very interested in this insulin within the cone snail venom um, to see whether any of the, the properties of it might be useful in the development of a human therapeutic. The researchers analyzed the structure of the snail's insulin and tried to see whether it would be compatible with humans. The insulin inserted into humans must undergo structural changes in order to attach its receptors and function. In contrast, the insulin from cone snails was found to be readily accepted by the receptors and function almost immediately. Applying the structure of insulin to drugs can drop blood sugar levels four to six times faster than conventional insulin injections. It's to look at the cone snail insulin and to see what it is that makes it um, act so quickly. And that's what we've done. And we hope to now take those principles and transfer them into human insulin to make a fast acting human insulin therapeutic. The research and its results were published in the global academic journal, Nature Structural and Molecular Biology. Kim Shin-hee is a full-time office worker in his 20s. His co-workers recently commented that he's gained weight and he still feels hungry despite eating. Overweight people don't feel full as easily as people of normal weight. When a person overeats, the body creates a substance that triggers a sense of satiation, sending a signal to the brain to stop eating. In response, the brain generates hormones that suppress appetite. However, in the case of overweight people, the brain is unable to recognize the substance that triggers satiation, and the person is left still feeling hungry. 
아무래도 더 식사량이 증가를 시키게 되고 그래서 일반인보다 과도한 칼로리가 들어와서 에너지로 남게 되니까 비만은 더 악화되고 이런 악순환이 계속 반복되는 거죠. Scientists in the United States have now found that suppressing the RAP1 gene in the brain can break this vicious cycle of overeating and weight gain. In an experiment with lab mice, the mice engineered without the gene were more receptive to the appetite suppression signals and had more secretion of the appetite-reducing hormone, leading to weight loss. Experts hope that developing a substance that can suppress RAP1 will lead to new ways of fighting obesity. Dense forests like this often have a calming effect on people, thanks to all the phytoncides emitted from the trees. Korean researchers have discovered the science behind phytoncides' calming effect. The compound alpha-pinene, which makes up most of the phytoncide released by pine trees, activates the GABA-A receptor, which acts as a switch that triggers sleep. In essence, phytoncide is a relaxant. The researchers conducted sleep experiments using alpha-pinene on mice and found that mice that consumed alpha-pinene were more relaxed and fell asleep quicker. Alpha-pinene을 먹이지 않은 그 군들보다는 그 알파피넨을 먹인 군들이 훨씬 빨리 잠이 들고 그다음 더욱 오래 잠이 든다는 것을 확인할 수 있었습니다. Furthermore, researchers found that phytoncides positively affect sleep. When researchers analyzed the brain waves of mice that were inserted with a high concentration of alpha pinene, they found significant amounts of delta waves when the mice were asleep. This is different from when conventional sleeping pills are used. 본 연구를 통해서 그 소나무 피톤치드가 진정 작용뿐만 아니라 수면 개선 효과가 있는 것을 저희가 확인할 수 있었습니다. 그러한 수면 개선 효과를 바탕으로 저희가 천연물 즉 소나무 피톤치드를 기본으로 한 다양한 합성 물질을 저희가 개발을 할 수가 있고요. The researchers are now aiming to develop sleeping medications that have no side effects and use phytoncides. I know a lot of people suffer from insomnia and I personally have sleeping problems so I would love to see a sleeping aid with all natural ingredients. And because sleep is essential for our well-being and health, this is definitely a drug to look forward to in the near future. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave you with that because it's already time for me to wrap up this edition of Infoscope. Of course, we will be back next week with more from the IT and science world. So thank you for joining us today and goodbye everyone.